Welcome to Friday, friends and neighbors. We sure appreciate you for stopping by. We have a special legislative session in the books. The highest paid public official in America. I'm sure we can't spoil that one for you. And the passing of a pro bass angler. My name's Ike Morgan and we're down in Alabama. There was a flurry of activity Thursday evening as the Alabama Legislative Special Session came to a close. The special session was called by Alabama Governor Kay Ivey to address the redistricting of congressional and state legislative and board of education districts. Now here in our second year of COVID, with its federal vaccine mandates and state-level pushback, the session went a little beyond reapportionment, so you might call it an extra special session. Here are a handful of highlights from AL.com Capitol reporter Mike Kaysen. Governor Ivey signed the Congressional Redistricting Bill. Now, Democrats don't like it, and it appears pretty certain that at least in the near term, we'll continue to have six Republicans and one Democrat represent us in the U.S. House of Representatives. Governor Ivey also signed the Legislative Redistricting Bill. That applies to your state representatives and senators. Some Republicans, and I'm not talking about the ones voting necessarily, but some don't like that one because they've lined up a 2022 run and now they may be trying to appeal to a different set of constituents and maybe even running against a different opponent for a different seat. Also, lawmakers gave final approval to a bill that would prohibit employers from firing an employee who refuses a COVID-19 vaccine and claims religious or medical exemptions. The Business Council of Alabama doesn't like that one because it says it'll put businesses in a pinch with state law forcing non-compliance of federal law that could lead to the loss of contracts. Now, if that bill is signed, it would be automatically repealed on May 1st, 2023, unless the legislature passes an extension. And we have one more. Another bill is heading to the governor that would require parental consent for minors to receive a COVID-19 vaccination. That's an exception to existing state law that says minors who are at least 14 years old do not need consent to receive medical treatment. Look for follow-ups, analysis, and opinion in coming days at al.com slash politics. Not only is he the highest paid college football coach in America, but once again, Nick Saban is the highest paid public employee in America, reports AL.com's William Thornton. Now, Bill used data from Wealth Circle, USA Today, and briefly for a list of the top 50 public employee salaries. And every single one of the top 50 are football or basketball coaches at public universities. Now, just three years ago, we published the same list. And there were some nine coaches on there, including a handful of chancellors, deans, and academic types. Now, those guys made the list because the list extended well below a million bucks. This year, you have to pull a $3.6 million salary just to make it to the top 50. So no chancellors or deans. Here are the highlights for our state from that list. And number one, of course, is Alabama head football coach Nick Saban who's getting by with a $9.75 million salary. There are also, and we won't list all of them here, but there are millions of dollars worth of former Saban assistants on the list. Now, in fifth place, Pelham native and Clemson football coach Dabo Swinney is not over-soaking his pinto beans either with an $8.37 million salary. Auburn football coach Brian Harson is 19th at $5 million, And Auburn basketball coach and Auburn football superfan Bruce Pearl is 42nd at $3.9 million. You know, if your shirt comes off in the stands with the TV cameras on at a football game, you get superfan points. That's the rule. Bassmaster is reporting that Leeds, Alabama resident and three-time Bassmaster Angler of the Year Aaron Martins has died after suffering from brain cancer. Martins' wife, Leslie, announced his passing on Facebook. The popular angler was originally from California but moved to Leeds, which is a whole lot closer to many of the lakes that the tours fish. When I say popular angler, I mean you would often see reports and quotes where so many of the guys thought an awful lot of Martins on and off the tour. They say to do what you love for a living if you can, and Martins was an outdoorsman. Several years ago, Birmingham News sports reporter Solomon Crenshaw Jr. 
Asked him what he thought it'd be like to work a desk job and wear a suit. Martin said, quote, I think I look good in one, but no, that wouldn't be a happy way of life for me if I had to do that every day. And God bless him, he didn't. Among his career wins was the $100,000 2009 Southern Challenge on Lake Gunnersville. Aaron Martins was 49 years old. Thank you all so much for listening. Have a great weekend. We're going to be back here on Monday. Until then, stop by and see us anytime you can. We're open 24 hours a day and seven days a week on the internet at AL.com. Music.